Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna paint this watercolor using three tubes of paint. I'm gonna show you how to get that really soft atmospheric glow and also the silhouetted fishing boat. It's gonna be really easy and really fun. This image is from our sponsor, Graphic Stock. You can check them out online at graphicstock.com or click on the link in the video description. Have a look around. If you like what you see, consider signing up for the free seven day trial that allows you to download 20 images a day for a week. And if you like it, you can continue on as a subscriber for a reasonable monthly fee. I think it's a great service, especially if you're an illustrator like I am and I don't always have the means to go out and get reference photos for my work. Sometimes I need to make sure I have a commercial use image that I can use royalty free for my um, artwork, for my book illustrations, and for uh, design work I might do for clients. So if that's you, go check it out. I think you'll enjoy it. Now let's go to the table and paint that painting. I'm going to start off by putting a horizon line about a quarter of the way up my paper, a quarter to a third. I'm choosing a ruler because I have one handy, but you can of course freehand that. And then I'm just going to draw the boat kind of um, a little bit more to the uh, to the left side of my paper. Now of course if you weren't comfortable with the drawing you could always trace it. That's absolutely fine. I think that um, especially for adults you can learn a lot by tracing. Now we're going to have a little bit of a shadow in the water but I just want to indicate I don't really want to have any hard lines in the water. And I'm just going to put a couple masts up here and there's like a little crossbar that goes across and you might be able to just see the little bit of like a the uh, I don't know if it's a pontoon it's just that kind of like little extra little um, part that kind of sticks out the side. I think it gives the boat balance. I don't know because I'm not a fisher person, fisherman. I want to be politically correct and really that's all I'm going to sketch on there. Um, what I really love about this composition is the beautiful huge sky. So we're going to begin by wetting the paper and you can do that with either a brush or if you prefer you can use a um, bottle of water, a spray bottle of water. I recommend that um, even if you use the water to wet the paper that you go ahead and, and spread it out with your uh, watercolor brush. I'm working on 140 pound Cotman cold press paper, Cotton by Windsor & Newton. It's a, it's a more affordable brand of watercolor paper. It's not the cheapest, it's not the most expensive, but it's a nice um, reliable paper and I have the edges taped down with painter's tape since you can see I've got this, I've got this paper really, really wet. It should be really shiny. When you're looking at it, your paper should shine. And I, don't mind those little black fuzzies. I'm wearing this sweater. It's, it's 80 outside, but it's chilly in my basement studio. Um, so it's a, little, it's a little cold. I'm gonna use some cobalt blue. And I'm gonna get my colors that I plan on using. I wanna use a little lemon yellow. So I'm going ahead and just making these puddles on my paper here. And I think I actually want a little cadmium red because I don't want, I don't wanna have super, super purple. I'm gonna go with a little cad red deep, I think, for this. Hopefully it won't be too gray when I mix it with my, with my blue. Let me just test it out here. Oh, this is perfect. Just a little bit of purple. That's what I want. I don't want it, I don't want it super bright. This is a very, um, a very soft color. Now I want to show you here. I always clean my brush in one side and then I get fresh water in the other or I'll have two separate buckets. That way it'll keep my mixes nice and fresh looking. So I'm going to take a little bit of this, um, light color. See, it's just a very, very soft purple and I'm going to add it to the top of my paper and I'm gonna mix it up a little bit darker on my palette because as you know with watercolors it um, it dries much lighter. Get a little bit of that cad red deep. Cad red medium might be a little too orange for that and it might just make it a little bit too um, too gray, too too dull. Alright, I'm gonna add that up in the corner there and it's gonna dry a little bit lighter so don't worry. I'm gonna go with a little bit of the blue now drag that down. Now you will want to have a paper towel handy because we're going to do a little bit of lifting. We're going to pull out our clouds with lifting and we'll go back in with with more layers of clouds and I want a little bit of yellow down towards the bottom and the other reason that um, that I wanted to not have super bright colors, I didn't want to have green in my sky, I wanted to be able to control that quite a bit. Um, and if you look at my palette, I think you can see, I wanted to do this also like a, a vertical picture so you could kind of see my palette as I was working because I get often get questions about, um, about what I'm using 
for my palette how I'm mixing. I know that's a kind of um, a little bit of a problem some beginners have trying to figure out exactly what to do. All right, so now I think I'm going to lift out some clouds. Regular paper towel works great for this. I just want to kind of get this. Um, and if you look at the photo, I'll put a direct link to that photo so that you can find it easily. Um, I wanted to get these really bright lit up clouds there pulled out of the sky. This is going to be much softer um, painting than you probably used to seeing me paint. And the clouds are getting skinnier as they get down near the horizon. Because it, on when you're painting and when you're looking in real life, the things that are that are highest and lowest in your field of vision are going to be closer to you. And then the things that are more towards the middle, more towards the horizon, are going to be smaller. So if it's closer to that horizon line, it's going to get smaller. And that's kind of how you can kind of fake a little bit of um, a little bit of depth in your paintings. You know how to do it. You can fake it. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to add the same colors in the water. You can see how I've already got some blending there. I'm going to go back in, start with my purple down here towards the bottom, work it up. I can go right over where I have the boat because that's going to be silhouetted. It's going to be darker. We're still going to use these same colors. I really believe in a limited color palette. And I'm not saying don't go buy all those colors that you want and that you love, but I'm just saying don't use all of them in the same painting. You know, <laughs> even when I'm using colored pencils or markers, I still won't use the whole box. I'll use the ones that, that go, the ones that will improve my picture, and keep mixing from those. Now you may be noticing where I've really wet the paper, that there's some little speckles. They'll go away when it dries, don't worry about that. Alright, so now I'm going to pause the video and I am going to dry this with my hair dryer. All right, nice and flat. I'm actually using this dry brush just to brush off any of those sweater fuzzies that have floated down. It's also a great way to remove um, brush hair if your brush tends to shed. All right, and it's nice and flat again now that it's dry. Okay, so now we're going to work on the clouds, and I'm going to pick up um, some of that purple that we mixed. And it has sat on my palette and dried up a little bit, plus the paper's dry, so it's going to be darker. And I'm going to be careful not to go below my horizon line. Now, if you look at the picture on the computer, there's actually a boat in the horizon line, but that's all right. I'm going to omit that because I really don't think it adds to this particular scene. I'm painting straight across just so I can preserve the horizon line. Um, but then I am just going to kind of tap up and use the round part of my brush to kind of give me some nice cloud shapes. It's kind of misty, misty back there. And generally you want your clouds to be a little bit flatter on the bottom. This brush I'm using, it's a Princeton Neptune. I really enjoy it. It's synthetic, so I don't have to worry about, you know, I don't have to worry about any animals being, being harmed in the creation of the brush, but by golly it works awfully nice. <laughs> it's a great brush. So you can kind of see how we're starting to build depth. You see those those clouds back there? I really um, I really think this is a fun exercise. Even if you didn't feel comfortable doing the boat and you just wanted to, you know, play with the clouds, totally can do that. Now as an illustrator, you know, I do um, children's books occasionally. You know, sometimes you're just like, geez, I need a picture of this. I need a picture of something I've never taken a picture of. I need something to look at because um, because I have nothing, no base of reference for something I'm trying to draw. If you get something too dark, just tap it with a paper towel. So that's where graphic stock can come in really handy. It can be really hard to hunt the web and try to find um, commercial use royalty free graphics and you kind of need that if you're doing something in a book or you know you're working on a commercial project not just you know for your own your own practice and enjoyment so you know it's really an important service I just wanted to uh, let you guys know about that and let's see I think I'm gonna add a little bit of water to my paint so it gets a little bit lighter as I go up and I'm just gonna kind of tap on so over some of the areas where I have put, um, where I have lifted off some clouds, I just want to kind of dab in a little bit of this. Not a ton, just a little bit. Clouds are kind of funny. You don't want to overdo them. You're probably always better to underdo than overdo with a cloud. I also like this brush because I can get right on the tip and just put little bits of paint down or I can um, 
I can put more, you know, I can press down more and get really uh, thick strokes. And I like how I can turn it and get random shapes because you don't want all your shapes to be the same when you're doing clouds. I watered that down a little bit more for these really light ones up here, up here in the corner. You kind of kind of get a little bit of sky poking through, but you've also got some dark clouds, but you also got the sun setting, so it's like lighting up some of the clouds. So it's it can be very tricky. And a lot of times I'll use whatever I've done, like however my paint happened to fall, I'll try to use that to my advantage. So if I have a dark spot where I wasn't exactly intending on one, it'll be like, you know what? I think that's a nice cloud. We're going to have a cloud there. There are no mistakes. Bob Ross just says, there's no mistakes in painting, just happy little accidents. And I tend to agree. All right, I wanted to add a little bit of a golden rim along that. So I'm going to do a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow so I get kind of like a golden color there. See that golden? I'm not using a lot of paint. That's the key here. It's such a soft painting. You don't want to overdo it with too much paint. It's going to go around along the edge. I probably need a little bit more than that. That's a little too bright. There we go. Get that little rim, that golden rim. If it looks too much like lemon, you just bring a little more of that red. And sometimes it's really kind of scary when you put that color down, you don't have any other, when it's the first time you put that color down, like when I first put that purple, when I'm putting this gold, it's like, oh, I don't have anything else like that. This is looking really out of place. And it will until you get more there. So have faith. It is a little bit of a leaf of faith, but you know what? It's only a piece of paper and you're learning stuff. And even if it doesn't come out exactly the way you planned, you've learned something. Okay. So, you know, that's another reason if, if you're too um, worried working on expensive paper, get cheaper paper, you know, it may, you know, it might not turn out as nice as it would have on the expensive paper, but if you're not going to use the paper because you're afraid of ruining it, then you're way better off to have cheaper paper and actually paint. That's what I think anyway. I know a lot of instructors are like, get the best you can afford, get the best you can afford. But if it's going to make you afraid to pick up a brush and to use it, then get the cheapest you can feel comfortable using. That's my opinion. You can just keep on adding until you feel like you have done all you wanted to do here. Some clouds will be pretty much total white. You can soften it anywhere just with like white water, just plain clear water on your brush. You can soften anything. And pretty much we have all those colors in the sea already. I'm not going to worry about those. All right, so for painting the boat, you could stick with this, but you may want to switch over to a brush that's not going to hold so much water, okay? Because we need a dark color. And if we get too much water in there, then the color's not going to be very dark. So I'm going to choose a, um, a round synthetic because that is not going to hold that much water, even though it's a big one. I like a big brush. It's still going to be a lot better. So I want to stick with those same colors. I'm going to almost mix up a super, super dark purple. Notice how I'm keeping it away from my other wet colors. Go in with that cadmium red. I want to get mostly cut, mostly paint, very little water here because I'm mixing up a dark. See, it's almost pasty. I'm going to see what I can get in there. I'll go back in with a wet brush and clean that out, but I want to try to get, use as little water as possible to do that. But it's not going to give us a super bright purple because we have not, we're using um, colors that aren't that close to each other in the color wheel. All right, I think that's pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and paint my little boat here. And it's a silhouette, which I think silhouette paintings are like probably the best ones to start off with for a beginner because you don't have to worry about as many colors. It's very forgiving. And if you ended up with too many brush like pencil marks, like I tend to be very sketchy when I draw, I can go in if any are like sticking out, I can go in with an eraser 
I like a soft, I like the soft plastic ones, and I can go in and I can erase that. Get our little, and if you work on your brush straight up and down, to like 90 degree angle with the paper, I know it makes my hand get in the way, and I apologize, but um, you can get a really fine line. And you can even let your line, the lines be broken a little bit as if it like kind of is getting a glint off the sun. That's fine. I'm not sure what this is. I don't like to paint something if I'm not sure what it is, but I'm just going to fake it. <laughs> I'm just going to put it in there anyway. All right, I want to get this little like, kind of pontoon thing on the side. Maybe just leave a little bit of highlight in there just to show that it's, you know, what it is. It's really hard to tell with a silhouette, and I probably wouldn't have even known what it was, in, except I went through um, graphic stock and looked at some other fishing boats just to get a little point of reference, so I would know in my brain a little bit more about what was what I was seeing in this picture. And then I want to get my uh, reflections. I actually, if you notice what I'm doing, I'm kind of hovering over, and then I'm letting the paper, I'm letting the uh, the brush hit like drop once I feel like I'm in the right place. I want that motion of the water. All right, and I'm just going to tap in the masts. It's a fairly calm sea. I don't know if that's that good for fishing. Is calm seas better for fishing than rough seas? I'm not sure. I'm not a fisher person, and I'm a vegetarian, so I don't fish. <laughs> All right, and there you have it. It's a um, quick and easy painting that you can try. I do hope you try it, and let me know how you get on. One great thing that I like about using painter's tape, this is just hardware store painter's tape, nothing expensive. I'm um, using this to tape down my paper is that when I pull up the paint, the tape when I'm done, is I have like an instant mat, and it, and it makes it look very finished so you can kind of visualize how it's going to look when you frame it. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I want to thank our sponsor Graphic Stock for uh, bringing us this video today, letting me use their images. You can find them online at graphicstock.com and I will have a link in the video description so you can check that out as well. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.